Hello, and welcome to another episode of Virtual Setworks Live. Today, we're going to talk about another one of the most commonly asked questions about how to work with virtual sets, and that's going to be camera movement. A lot of times, people see cameras moving around the virtual set, and that added motion uh, really adds value to the production. Um, so we're going to start off in Premiere. Premiere is um, one of the most commonly used editing platforms. You can do camera motion on a lot of different uh, applications and, and hardware, but um, I'm going to show you in an editing program first to show you um, a typical application. So we're going to start off where we left off last week um, with the uh, shadows and reflections tutorial. And because we used, we're working in HD and we used an HD background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to get a higher resolution version because if we start zooming in on um, an HD version background, it's going to break up a little. And we have two different versions of for that. We've got um, what we call HD Extreme and 4K. And HD Extreme is halfway between uh, HD and 4K, but it also contains some extra features, which we'll get to in a little bit. But first, I'm going to have to get um, get a new background. So we're going to bring in a 4K version here. And remember, um, I don't know if you remember this this talent, what it looks like um, is uh, it's it's kind of sideways. And the reason for that I mentioned before is that ability to get that extra uh, zoom because the vertical resolution on its 1920, uh, the horizontal resolutions on its uh, 1080. So we can actually get a lot more zoom out of a uh, single talent chroma key shot um, by doing it this way. Um, this shot, this 4K background, um, is already zoomed in, and this kind of gives you an idea of what the, the push-in resolution is on it, so I need to go and uh, I'm going to back it out by using the scale tool. So you see, this is the full size of the set, and the talent, uh, I actually need to, um, I'm going to nest them together and move all of those uh, shadows and reflections together to size them appropriately. In, in fact, um, there shouldn't be a reflection in this set at all. I will leave the shadow in place and we'll turn off. So you see, I, I just jumped into that nested sequence and turned the uh, turned the reflection off and back to here. I'm just positioning the talent. I'm not gonna bother with putting uh, content in the screens or changing the backgrounds, but those are all things that are easy to do. Now, as far as actually doing the camera movement, um, we again use the, the nest function. So I'm gonna nest these two together. And now when we do our motion, when we make our adjustments, they all move together. So we're gonna create a keyframe at the beginning. Zoom in a little bit. I should do keyframes for um, X, Y, and Z as well. And then we'll add just some slight motion. At the end. So you can see now as the um, clip progresses, and I do need to um, adjust this Y key a little bit. So it starts wide, zooms in fairly quickly, and then it's a slow back out zoom so that there's still some um, motion available. If we wanted to change that, so let's say we wanted to crop in on the screen that she's probably gonna be talking about something. Um, I've jumped out to this last key here. We're going to slowly zoom in on that, and then presumably we're going to cut to whatever content is there. So that's um, how you do camera motion in Premiere. Um, next up, what we're going to do is we're going to get into a program called Fusion. 
um, which used to be made by a company called um, Ion. And um, Blackmagic acquired uh, that program so that um, they were able to uh, sort of make a nice pairing with Resolve. So now um, Fusion is a Blackmagic product, and they've just released um, a version 9 of it, which includes some sophisticated uh, virtual reality additions so that you can work in VR in Fusion, which is a very exciting addition. We're working in version 8 here, um, so we don't have 9 yet. But I'm going to start by walking you through how this, uh, how this program actually works. So last, uh, last time we worked in After Effects, and After Effects is a layer-based um, compositing program. This is what's called a node-based compositing program. And, and um, if you're not familiar with it, it takes a little getting used to. But once you understand how it works, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so I have the same uh, footage again that uh, we were looking at earlier. And uh, as you can see, she's lying on, lying on the side, unkeyed. And I threw a chroma key in here, and you can see there's a little line with an arrow going from this this loader clip, this loader node, to the um, chroma keying node. And I just need to go in here and pick out some uh, areas to, to chroma key, and then I just need to clean it up a little bit. Um, there's some nice spill suppression ability in here, so setting the spill method to medium um, removes a lot of that green spill and you can see that this is this is pretty much already where I want it. Um, problem is of course you're still lying on our side so um, we've used a we'll use a transform here and this um, let me reset this transform. This transform here um, is what's going to rotate the um, rotate the clip, but we need to make some adjustments to it. We'll scale it down, and then we're going to do um, duplicate the edges because we don't want to deal with any of the uh, the alpha. Unfortunately, we still have some tiny bits of material left unkeyed right on the edges there. So that fixes that up, and now we have our um, High resolution 1920 vertical um, chroma keyed talent, and we're gonna then. This is where we're gonna bring in the HD extreme version. So, Fusion has the ability to import PSD files, and what it does when it does that is, it creates this gigantic stack of um, nodes that put together all of the different elements. And you can see what this set looks like. So here's all of the nodes stacked. Um, and you're going to see some gradients in there, which might, might not immediately make sense. But they're called UV maps. And they, they really deserve their own tutorial, which we might do a little bit further down the road. Um, they're sort of what allows us to map talent into areas um, easily. So you can see there's reflections. They'll automatically create the reflections if there's tiling. Well, I'll, I'll do a little bit of an example of it. Um, but you can s see what the basic, uh, the, the bottom layer of this looks like, and then each additional layer um, adds just a little, a couple elements. So there's the, the background plate. And I've already gone through and have weeded through this to save you the time of me weeding through it. So this stack here, uh, I've reduced all of those um, all those layers to just this stack. So you can see this is what our set looks like, just the important stuff. Um, shadow for the truss, there's the truss, um, screens, different things. And we can easily turn them on and off by going into these nodes and turning them on and off. And then I also pulled out um, the UV maps for those screens back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, output of this stack of PSD layers, and I'm going to put our chroma keyed talent over it. And um, Fusion uses a node called merge to do this. And we can see that our talent isn't um, placed appropriately for this. So I'm going to size, size her down, move her over a little bit. 
And then last, in order to actually do the, um, the camera movement, we can use um, the transform, much like the one that we were looking at in, in Premiere. So down across, down here is the timeline. Um, I'm going to start slide. I'm going to animate it. I'll set a key here, and then somewhere along a few seconds in, we'll zoom. It, we'll zoom over a little bit, and then uh, quite a ways in, we'll zoom in just a touch more. And then to end, we'll zoom back out a bit. So as you scrub through the timeline, you'll see different uh, snapshots of it, of the camera moving around. And we can zoom quite close into the talent because again, we started off with that uh, extra resolution. Um, the, uh, the horizontal resolution of HD is um, almost the vertical resolution of 4K. So we've got quite a bit of um, resolution to play around with here. And just to make this, to finish this off, um, I'm going to add in, so what I'm going to do here with these UV maps, I'm going to merge them together so you can see these are the screens. And then um, I'm going to use what's called a channel boolean tool. And the channel boolean tool, um, is really neat because it's going to allow me to take these colors and aim them at the UMV texture. Um, that's what's going to feed this next tool, which takes those textures and then it's going to take this. We have some footage, which is not loading because it's not footage. We're going to take this footage of. Uh, Sydney that we have, which is just some animated, um, it's not animated, it's, it's footage of Sydney, Sydney Harbor, one of the harbors in Sydney. And then it's going to map it into each of these screens. And then we're going to take the output of this and we're going to merge it on top of our, our virtual set. So now we have this uh, this clip has been mapped in there, and that's really important because um, when we zoom in on it, you can see that this this screen has a little bit of a curve to it, and we didn't have to fit it in there at all because it because of the UV maps it automatically places it. And as I scrub through the timeline, you can see all the little the little green uh, nodes popping up, um, green lights on the nodes popping up to indicate where where it's doing the rendering. And then finally, we would create a saver and save it out as a uh, an AVI file or, or an MOV file. That is how you do video uh, camera movement in a virtual set in Premiere and um, Blackmagic's Fusion. So if you have any guys have any questions, um, please feel free to leave them in the Facebook chat or in YouTube, and I'll see what I can do about answering them. Thanks for watching.